the title of my talk is PSA, Why 1.5 is the New 4. My name is E. David Crawford from the University of Colorado and my disclosures are below. I just want to poll the audience and ask the question, are you satisfied with the current state of prostate cancer early detection? How many say yes and how many say no? Well, the answers that I've heard, both from family practitioners and neurologists, are they are concerned. They each have different reasons. Common areas include screening parameters, informed decision, risk, and benefits. However, both specialties believe there is a value to early detection in some men. PSA screening has been flying high for several decades right now. Unfortunately, this became the world's shortest vacation a couple of years ago when the U.S. Services Preventive Task Force gave us a D recommendation, although recently they raised it to a C, which is not much improvement. Family practice physicians are confused by the message that we give them. Dr. Cataloni years ago, rightly so, put forth a cutoff of 2.5. We have four, we have PSA velocity, PSA density, age-specific PSA, percent-free PSA, complex PSA, five, PCA3, select MDX, 4K, and the poor family practice physicians, they help. We need a simple message for those that order PSAs. 90% of PSAs in the United States are ordered by family practice and internal medicine. The PLCO trial, as everyone is familiar with, was a negative trial on screening. One positive thing that came out of that was we learned and have reported that when the PSA was less than one, five to ten years, very few people developed an abnormal PSA. Armed with this information, we interrogated a very robust database, the Henry Ford database, looking at men who had an initial PSA of one to five with a five-year minimum follow-up, not on five ARIs. We found 21,000 men, and interestingly, it substantiated what we learned from the PLCO trial, that men with a PSA of less than 1.5 had a very low risk, 0.51% of prostate cancer in the next five years, whereas above that, the risk increased. The area under the curve was 0.87. So 1.5 is a danger zone. The way forward is that 1.5 is a surrogate for prostate health, BPH, prostate cancer, and long-term prostate risk. We need to emphasize that men who have a PSA greater than 1.5 don't necessarily need a biopsy. We have prostate cancer markers to help us determine whom would benefit from a biopsy. One of the concerns was will this level of less than 1.5 subject a lot of men to unneeded evaluation. We looked at about 400,000 PSAs from Bioreference Lab, and 73% were less than 1.5. There was only 20%, 1.5 to 4, which fall in our danger zone. One of the more common reasons for an elevated PSA with one greater than 1.5 is the size of the prostate. Both Dr. Rearburn and myself have published on this, showing that as the PSA increases, so does the size of the prostate and relative symptoms of BPH. And it was entitled, An Approach Using PSA Levels of 1.5 as a Cutoff for Prostate Cancer Screening in Primary Care. One of the questions that come forth, are we sure that we are not missing any significant cancers when the PSA is less than 1.5? I've shown you the PLCO data. Now I want to share with you some information from the University of Toronto presented at the AUA meeting and also our genomic marker data. Do high-grade prostate cancers routinely exist in men with PSAs of less than 1.5? Dr. Goldberg presented data where they had an aggressive approach to biopsy in men under the age of 50 that had risk factors such as family history and PSA levels that were minimally elevated. The results were that no one had a PSA that had a PSA less than 1.5 had a high-grade cancer. We used our genomic markers that are commonly used, PHI, 4K, and SELECT MDX, in our screening at the University of Colorado. And what we showed was that when you had a PSA of less than 1.5, 
the select MDX test was negative all the time, whereas the Phi and 4K score were positive 48 and 17 percent of the time. However, you could make a simple adjustment in the levels of Phi cut off to 52 and 4K to 20 percent to overcome this deficit. Prostate cancer clinical needs. Screening, we need a simple message, 1.5, and also the question comes up of informed consent. Vital signs and many tests that are routinely performed by family practice physicians, we do not get informed consent. PSA could be treated like other lab tests, lipids, electrolytes, weight, blood pressure. They don't get informed consent before they do these. They talk to you when the test is abnormal. They don't tell you if I draw lipids on you, you may go on a, a um, anti-lipid drug, uh, a statin, and you could have rhabdomyolysis, renal failure, and die. They don't tell you if I treat your blood pressure before they check it that you might have hypotension, fall, have a subdural, and have a adverse event. When does the informed decision comes? It comes after the test is found to be abnormal. My good friend Matt Rosenberg, who is trained as a urologist and is a family practice doctor currently in Michigan, has published extensively on this and basically feels that it is futile to try this ahead of time. In fact, if you look at other areas like breast cancer and colorectal, both in women and in men, we fail to have significant informed decision. The next thing is identified significant cancers um, and reducing unnecessary biopsies. Early detection, the goal is to find clinically significant cancers PSA alone to guide prostate decisions should probably end. We need better risk assessment to reduce unnecessary biopsies. We look at a group of men who have prostate cancer, only one of them and four has a significant cancer. How do we approach this? Risk stratification for clinically significant cancer, PSA greater than 1.5. Urologists will repeat the PSA if concerned, not BPH, for other things, do a genomic test such as select MDX, fire 4K, increased risk, consider biopsy, very low risk, avoid biopsy. We talk a lot about uh, Gleason 6 and active surveillance, and in general, I think in 2018, we want to eliminate both of these. So in summary, we have a man come to the family practice doctor, routine lab, PSA, less than 1.5 green light, come back in five years, greater than 1.5 to 4, a caution light, consider referral to a urologist, consider doing one of these molecular tests if one is concerned about the presence of prostate cancer, low risk, routine screening, high risk, consider a trust biopsy. So in conclusion, PSA greater than 1.5 is a reasonable cutoff, nothing is perfect. PSA 1.5 is a simple message for family practitioners to remember. In general, informed decision should happen, but it should happen after the test is abnormal. PSA 1.5 to 4 is a gray zone. It's not only a risk for prostate cancer, but BPH and prostatitis. Clinical evaluation and genomic markers will help us determine whom to biopsy. We have a website called www.pcmarkers.com that helps guide through all of this. My good friend Eric Klein, who was also wearing the hat, making genomics great again, and mine says make PSA great again. Thank you.